this is man-made mead. Today we're doing another mead video. I have something really different though. I was in my local brew shop and uh, stumbled upon a different kind of yeast. This is a fast, firm fast, 48 hour fermenting yeast. So let me try to get a little focus on it. This yeast says that it will ferment uh, up to 14 and a half percent in 48 hours, which is completely insane. That's super fast. Um, and I, I know that when you do ferment things fast, sometimes you get this kind of jet fuel, overly, uh, just not a great taste. And um, with that in mind, I want to try this. What I'm gonna do uh, is I'm gonna make my, I'm gonna make a sizer. And what a sizer is, for those of you who don't know, is a, uh, a mead that is based with like apple juice or apple cider or something like that. So what I'm using today is three gallons of Mott's apple juice and I went ahead and did some research, found out that this has no preservatives in it, which is good. Um, this whole yeast packet, uh, it has a clear instructions on it. It is graded right now for uh, up to 20% actually. It says uh, up to 14 and a half in 48 hours, but then it can go up to 20% in five days I am very skeptical of this. Uh, I imagine maybe it will get up that quick, um, but I, I don't know, I can't imagine it tasting good. And that's why I'm, I'm using cheaper um, apple juice. I'm making this, this mead uh, kind of with the expectation it's gonna be bad, which means I'm not putting a lot of my stock into it. And that was one thing. I didn't wanna make a mead that had um, 20 pounds of honey because this is meant for six and a half gallons of liquid. I'm not gonna use all of it, that's too much. Uh, what I'm going to do is I have a, a scale and I'm gonna weigh this, I'm gonna use half of the packet for this, which uh, will put me at my three gallons. Um, and then of course I'll put all my other ingredients on here on the screen. But what I wanna try is to see if this 48 hour, 14 and a half percent thing is true. Um, and I'll, I'll go ahead and, like I said, put all my ingredients down, uh, what I'm using today, and I hope you'll join me. It is definitely a little bit of a different um, mead to try, but I'm very curious. We'll use honey, we'll use apple juice, um, not a ton of honey, not really a ton of apple juice. Let's just go ahead and get started. What I first wanna do, because I am, um, I'm trying to uh, basically use half this packet, is I, I want to go ahead and get, we're gonna go ahead and start mixing in some water and uh, to pitch this yeast, re re like realistically, what we're gonna do is we're going to um, just pour the yeast in on top. We don't, we, don't, um, we don't do anything to start at the beginning. We don't rehydrate, we don't do anything like that. So uh, we're gonna try that. Let's go ahead and get some sugar. We need a lot of sugar content between all of our apple juice and all of these things. What I wanna do is get a test of my apple juice, see where its gravity is. Then we can start to figure out, oh, I need this much sugar, so on. So uh, here is a quick test of our gravity of our apple juice. All right, a quick gravity test of our apple juice. It is currently at, um, by itself, no different, no additions or anything like that. We're looking at about 1.06, excuse me, one point, oh my goodness, looking the wrong thing. 1.05, which is about 6%, about 7% ABV, 6%, excuse me. Uh, so we need to get, in order to get to that 20% mark, we have to go all the way to 1.1, almost 6. So we have quite a ways to go. And I think between um, adding, I have grain or granulated sugar. This is, uh, how much is this? About, I don't know, pound um, of granulated sugar. Uh, the whole yeast packet, I'll show you real fast. It's quite humorous actually, just how much. If you can see, you can see on this yeast packet that you need, in order for that 20% mark, you need about 17 pounds of sugar added. And that is assuming that you're adding straight sugar. That's not adding anything like I'm doing, which uh, I'm going to add, like we're talking about, I'm going to add different things, honey, and various things. Uh, that would have been a ton of honey, and I don't really want to do that. 
Um, let's go ahead and get our, our must up to 1.16, which will be really interesting. Uh, probably going to need to get some water going. Um, I, what I really want to try actually is getting my apple juice into a bucket. We'll use um, a little bit of water to mix in, put about six pounds of honey, see where it's at from there. I have of course sanitized everything with star sand and I also used PBW before I started. And we're going to go ahead and put in all of our Alright, so we are currently at actually seven pounds of honey. I went, add, I went ahead and added a little more. I'm going to stir. This is actually, this is a, uh, a degassing wand, but I use it for stirring because I can. So I'm going to stir this up quite a bit. Okay, seven pounds of honey, three gallons of apple juice. Uh, I want to go ahead and see where the gravity is now. I don't need to put it into my cylinder because it should be able to should be able to put it in here. We are at we have barely barely passed the 1.1 mark. We have a lot more to go. I don't want to add honey because like I said this um, mead is going to I don't, I don't have high hopes for it. I don't want to waste a ton of honey. Um, I'm going to add some granulated sugar now. But instead of adding granulated sugar straight into there because it won't mix as well, I'm going to mix some water, uh, heat it up a little bit, um, and then so that will dissolve into there. So let's dissolve some sugar into water to continue to get our gravity up. All right, here we have a gallon of water. We're going to start heating up the water, um, and it is getting hot. I want to go ahead and put, I'm going to put a whole pound of sugar in because I anticipate that being a fair amount. Um, and we're going to stir, of course, because we want this to dissolve in the water. We don't want it to just um, burn at the bottom. All right, before I go ahead and, and move uh, this into the um, into the apple juice, I do want to see what the gravity of this is going to be. And it's going to be super high. That's like one point. Hmm, I wonder if that, well, three... I still don't know if that'll be enough, but I'm willing to risk it. We're gonna go ahead and put um, this gallon uh, of water that has a pound of sugar in it into the apple juice, and we're gonna see if that works. All right, here is the gallon of water. It's a little, just a little hot, it's not boiling. It didn't get too crazy hot, and that's fine by me. It makes it easier to pour. I do think, yes, I've diluted down the apple juice a little. Um, however, the sugar content, the flavor is still going to be there. Um, and that's really what matters to me. I'm going to stir this up. Okay, let's go ahead and check the gravity again. Now with all our apple juice and everything. We are at 1.1. Two, we didn't go up very much. Um, my last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to try. I don't want to do any more water because I'll just continue to dilute. Uh, I'm going to straight up just add one more pound of sugar. And we're going to try and get this as high as we can. This is my last bit of sugar. Um, if we don't get up to that 20% mark, that's okay. I do at least want to test the whole 14.5% in um, 40 hours. So here it is, we're just going to put it right in with a little warm water that's in there, and we'll stir like crazy. That is one more pound of sugar. In our last attempt, see where we're at. This is a lot of sugar. We got to 1.14 which is approximately 1.14. That gets us to 18. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I didn't get to my 20% mark, uh, mainly because I didn't have enough sugar. I don't really want to use more honey. I, I don't, I don't know. I feel like I, um, this isn't going to be as good as I want. That 18% is fair, very fair, frankly. Um, 
So we're going to leave it at that. Uh, really the test is how well does this yeast work? Now the thing with this yeast is, it's pretty simple. We're just going to go ahead and pitch it on top. But I don't use all this. This is rated for six and a half gallons. This bucket right here is um, a six and a half gallon. We only have about five and a half. Um, I want to use about three quarters of this. So I'm going to quickly weigh this and then uh, we're going to use three quarters of it. All right, we're changing scales. This is teared out. I'm going to use a bowl so I can actually set it up right. This weighs 254 grams. We quarter that. That is about 60, what is that? 62 grams per. Um, so I need to get it down to, uh, what is that? 180 grams, roughly. All right, so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Uh, I'm gonna pour some in. We're trying to get down to uh, the 60 gram mark. We are at 110. 71, just a little bit more. And I think that's good. So, um, ultimately I could probably pitch the whole thing in and it'd be fine. I don't really need to. I might honestly just go ahead, if this works well, I'm gonna baggy this, baggy this up and save it because this is good for uh, two gallons of mead, so I could use it again. Next step, we're gonna stir the crap out of this thing, and basically that's the end of this part. All right, here we go, we're gonna stir more. The yeast need lots of stirring, lots of oxygen. If these are fast fermenting ones, then they will go crazy soon. All right, I've stirred this like crazy. Uh, yes, there's still some yeast clumps, but they will start to dive down. Here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, instead of ending this video, I want to go ahead and update you every 12 hours. So here is um, what's happening. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on this, put my airlock on it, and uh, we are going to store the fermentation range, fermentation time at 68 degrees, which I have my temperature, temperature controlled um, fermenter or fridge. Uh, I can put that in there at 68. We're going to check it every 12 hours and see after 48 hours, approximately, if this has gone from what it was at, which was 1.14, um, if it drops down all the way to our uh, zero in that 48 hour time, here is 12 hours later. I should also mention this is going to ferment like crazy because it is fermenting so quickly. That's why I have some headspace. That headspace will hopefully keep everything from coming out. Um, you'll see if, an update if things are uh, flying out of it. All right, we are at the 12 hour mark. And um, if it looks like there's some fermentation that's happened, but we're going to go ahead and do a gravity reading real fast. The gravity is still. Try and get to it, try and see it. Still pretty high, 1.14. Uh, so I don't know if the fermentation is just not wanting to happen right now. Um, as vigorous as it says, but we're gonna wait another 12 hours and see if something changes to where it starts really moving. All right, we're at 24 hours and you can see the airlock is going crazy right now. I want to go ahead and open this up. And um, there's water all on the top from how aggressively it is fermenting. Let's see what it looks like inside. Yeah, we are moving. Um, you can see lots of bubbles, which means that the, the um, yeast are really taking hold. I want to, of course, try to get a little gravity reading to see if anything's changed. So let me do that. Okay, here's our gravity reading. After 24 hours, it's a little bit hard to read just because of all the bubbles. 1.13, so we're making some headway. Um, I do wonder about the whole myth of the 48 hours and 14%. I don't know if we're gonna get there, but um, let's go ahead and cut to now 36 hours. All right, we are at 36 hours. It is still uh, bubbling very well. And I 
think the fermentation is moving quickly, but let's go ahead and get a gravity reading. There's still lots of bubbling, lots of fermentation action, as you can see. Um, and I wonder where the gravity's at. 36 hour mark, like I said, and it has gotten down to 1.1, meaning um, ultimately, let's see, that is about, uh, that has reached 13% alcohol, so we've gone down 5% in 36 hours, um, and I think. That's not totally that close to getting to the 14 and a half, but we still have 12 hours. Let's see what happens in 12 hours. All right, we are now at 48 hours total that it has been fermenting, and we are going to see where it's at. It's been bubbling like this pretty well, and now I'm curious to see what the gravity is at. All right, so let's check the gravity. I heard this is supposed to ferment very vigorously, and vigorously in that it would go everywhere, um, it hasn't been too crazy. The current gravity is at, I don't know if you can see it super well, about 1.9, 1.09. So it did not completely get to the 14.5%. Uh, it started at 1.14, which as we saw before is a relative to uh, about 18%. So getting down to 1.09, means that we got through about seven, no, not even seven, about six uh, points of gravity. And in that 24 hour, or excuse me, 48 hour span. I'm not completely done with the test. I wanna see how long it takes it for it to completely get up to that 14 and a half. So I'll check it again in 12 hours and we'll see from there um, if it starts moving any quicker. All right, so test at about 60 hours, we're at 10 point eight so really haven't gone down that much um, it makes me wonder if it's starting to cap out uh, i don't know let's go ahead and see about um about 72 hours or almost three days in a second here is 72 hours with three days um let's see we are roughly you can kind of see about 5% ABV, or uh, in other words, 1 point, a little less than that, excuse me, or more than that, 1.06 ABV total. So um, that means that we're, we started at 1.14, which is about a 18%, 1.06. 06 puts, puts us at about 11% ABV in 72 hours. Um, not quite 14%, but we're still on the quest to see how long it takes. All right, we're at three and a half days. Uh, you can see it's still fermenting some, not as vigorous. It has now landed on. It's about 10.5. So it's, it's slowly going down to that, uh, to hopefully level out. And there's still some fermentation. Try to get a good, good view, but you can see some going on. Um, make a little more headway. We are at four days and it is at 1.05 uh, gravity. All right, we are on day five now and it is currently sitting at 10.05 still, which means I think the fermentation has has stopped completely. Um, so I I don't know. I, I wonder if I need to pitch more yeast or something to get it to drop completely down, because seemingly the fermentation is done. Um, I'm not sure quite yet what I'm going to do. This is day six. We picked up a little steam. I'm trying to be able to see it. And it is currently at about 10.4. So it's going down. It's going down slow, but it's still going down. Um, I guess we'll see how long, much longer it takes for it to level out. All right, we are now at seven days of fermentation time. 
The current gravity is about 1.025. Almost uh, 1.03. Fermentation, day number eight, it is at 1.025, roughly. So the fermentation is now day nine. It is 1.015, uh, almost 0 01, which means that it's slowly dropping. I'm thinking it's going to be about 12 days before it gets all the way through all 18% alcohol but we'll see all right it is now 11 days and we are currently at about 1.01 gravity um so we're almost leveled out okay it's day 12. um i want to go ahead and do another gravity reading i think today i'm going to go ahead and move it also out of this container the gravity reading currently is and I will say that it's been slowly like inching, bubbling along. Um, ten, 12 days to 10 point or 1.01 1 .01 gravity. So that means that we have uh, reached about 17% um, in 12 days, which is nowhere near what the um, package says. And that's kind of okay. Um, but also, I don't know if I did something wrong. I'm not totally sure. I, I'm not sure uh, what I if I did something wrong with this, but um, currently it is sitting at only 17%. Took 12 days. It could be that uh, I tried to push it too hard. I was kind of doing the ideal situation for the yeast packet. You know, they're going to put on the packet what it can do at its extremes. So maybe I did something wrong in that it didn't get to 14 and a half percent in 48 hours and it didn't get to 20% or it couldn't have got to 20% in the um, five day mark. So I, I don't know if I did something wrong or if it's just some whatever, but it did not reach 18% in that less than five days mark for, for what we were looking for, which is okay. Um, I want to go ahead and move it over to a new container now. And then uh, we're gonna get a little taste test. I'm curious to see if it tastes really strong or what it tastes like with such a fast, fast-ish uh, fermentation. Generally, I think that some other yeast like a D47, 11, 16 or something like that could have gotten up to that, um, not D47, it's 14, a, a KV1116 could get up to an 18% in probably 12 days too, uh, just with a fast fermentation, but um, I'm curious to see what this tastes like. So let's move it into a new container and then we're going to do a taste test and see what it is like. Okay, we're going to start moving it over. I will go ahead and mention that I also, I star sand um, everything I use before I put it in. So I've gone ahead and put all this stuff through a star sand solution. This is going to have a lot of, uh, a lot of yeast in it. So I've got to kind of prepare for that. Um, so we'll see how many times I have to rack it. All right, you can tell by the color of it that it is obviously not very um, <clears throat> clear. It is cloudy with what is, I'm going to assume, is yeast. So I believe that there's just a lot of um, yeast activity, so they've integrated themselves pretty well into the mead. And now they're going to drop out of suspension to the bottom over time, uh, as I believe the fermentation will slow or stop. So uh, my plan with this is, because I did my test in the beginning, I'm just going to go ahead and put the lid on it for now. Um, let it go through any last final fermentation it might want. Um, hopefully the, uh, the yeast will start to drop out of suspension a little bit. And then um, we will go ahead and, uh, and rack it over again. Hopefully again and again until it starts to clear up. But first, let's get a quick taste test of it. Okay, so like I said, it is not very clear. Um, I'll try and get a decent little shot of it for you. This is what it looks like right now. It is kind of like muddy water, not really anything great, but that doesn't mean it won't be good. Uh, I'm curious to see how it tastes. So smell, um, you can definitely smell the yeast, you can smell the apple. Uh, it's more, 
it's definitely a hot meat. I can tell, I can smell the alcohol content on it. Because it being a 17%, almost 18% um, mead, excuse me, uh, you are ultimately going to get that heat to it. And heat is a term we use a lot of times with alcohol. The heat of the alcohol, the feelings that burn, all of those things. So, let's try it. Definitely a little yeasty. Um, the apple is nice though. It's not, uh, it's really not too, like it, it tastes similar-ish to when, I, when I've made it, I hide, goodness, a mellow mel with apple. Um, it's almost a little more, of course, concentrated because it was apple juice. The overwhelming flavor though is that yeast right now. And it's just because it's all mixed in and ultimately it needs to drop out before it starts to be normal. Um, you do get the heat, that 17% is kind of there, hopefully, um, and I will say this, with time, your alcoholic content, the high alcohol meads need more time to age because that helps bring them down, mellow them out to where they aren't as hot and aren't as hard to drink. This one would be a hard to drink an entire glass of um, right now, but again, it's only 12 days old, so with some time, it'll be good. When you're making mead, if you make a high gravity mead, a high ABV mead, you need to let it age for a long time for it to be its uh, best. The young, the light meads, like a uh, like a hydromel, those that are 7% and uh, lower, they are really quick. You can turn them out super easy because they don't need a lot, a lot of time to age for them to mellow out. Um, but these do. This will, for sure. So, it's pretty good. Definitely needs some time for that yeast to fall out, and that will help. But the apple, I'm actually really pleased with this sizer because um, while the fermentation test didn't go as well as I want, it's still almost four and a half gallons of a sizer that will be pretty good with some age. But that's the key words, with some age. Um, and you can, I could drink all this right now and be fine and it, you know, whatever, if I wanted to do that. But the best taste, in my opinion, is the one that lets the age kind of help it round it out and do those things. So, easy enough. Um, we're going to let it sit. Uh, thank you for watching this test. This was a really interesting video. I saw the packet of yeast at my local brew shop, so I cannot um, say enough. Go to your local brew, sh brew shop if you have one. Um, and if you don't have one, you can go to manmademead.com and you can find most anything that I use aside from things like um, like that fast firm yeast, I don't have that on that store. Um, I do have all my buckets, all of my hydrometers, um, everything else that I use. It, it takes you to an Amazon link uh, and that will help actually support me some. So manmademead.com, check that out. You can also become a patron for as little as $2 a month. You can get access to early uh, early access to content, like my patrons saw this video um, at least three days before the video went live on YouTube. So that's kind of nice. You can be one of the first ones to see it, first ones to comment. It's also a great community to be a part of. And um, I need your help. I need support. I've got, uh, for example, my computer that I've been using for almost nine years now um, is finally dying, and which is great. It's, it's lasted this long, but I need to get a new computer at some point. And so, Stuff like that helps support me and helps me continue to make videos because without like a computer, I can't edit my videos. Um, and of course, your support is everything that uh, everything to me. So thank you so much for that. Check those links out, Patreon. I uh, also have a merchandise store, side6.com/manmademead. Uh, lots of various things and a Facebook. The Facebook group. We are almost we're over 300 people now of mead makers talking about mead, doing stuff together and it is a wonderful group. That is Man Made Meadery on Facebook. So, um, once again, thank you for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. If you want to try this experiment on your own, um, it is the fast, firm uh, yeast, and it's hard to miss the package. So, uh, give it a shot on your own. Let me know what you think down below, and leave a like. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys in another video. Cheers.